God open thou our lips. And of us grace. O God, make speed to save us.
The first lesson is written in the second book of Samuel, 7th chapter, 4th verse. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David. Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and a tabernacle, in all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be a ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as before time, and since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house, and when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Here endeth the first lesson.
The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 46th verse. And Joseph of Arimathea bought the fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulchre which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. And when the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here, behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly, and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Here endeth the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord have mercy upon us.
Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the Queen. Thy ministers of righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Clean our hearts within us. And save not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who alone can store to the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desire, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, Defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
It's a great pleasure to welcome the Londinium Choir. We had um, some of you before in a sort of the sort of towards the end of COVID. It's a sign of normality, the world getting back to its right place that you've been able to sing for us this evening. So that's really wonderful. Uh, after this service, light refreshments are served through in the vestry hall. Services this week are at their usual times. Um, if I could draw your attention to uh, the sing-along given, given with the Pimlico Musical Foundation tomorrow at the Parish House, um, beginning at 7 o'clock, an opportunity to sing songs on the shows. They much encourage you to go along that if you wish to do that kind of thing. Um, and on Wednesday of this week, the, the adults of the Pimlico Musical Foundation come together um, for their chorus work, and that's in preparation for a concert later on in the, um, well, in this, uh, sort of the school term. On Thursday of this week, uh, we continue our Lent course. Um, it's a sort of extended, now it's an Easter course, I suppose, um, and that's at seven o'clock in the vicarage. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance of the tomb and they told no one because they were scared. If you're like me and you grew up in the countryside, you, will, um, yeah, you would probably think nothing if you're going around walking the dog uh, about going, opening someone's gate, walking through their field, through the, the field had no sheep in it or anything like that, uh, and just walking through it, someone else's land, but you just, you know, you walk your dog through it. Um, you might go through another few fields, you might... Um, just enjoy the time. And you might come across a country church and the door will be closed. And the door is closed for a good reason, probably. One, keep the birds out because you don't want to be wearing protective headgear on Sundays. And um, to keep the heat in, even on a Sunday morning, if you were going to, to church, you'd find a closed door for that reason. But you have no problem because in the countryside, churches are generally uh, unlocked. You just go in. Um, no problem at all. No one challenges you. You just enjoy it. When I lived uh, up north, uh, I went to a church that had um, a similar policy in terms of doors. The doors were closed, but these doors were closed for a different reason. They were closed so that people wouldn't come in. Um, and in many senses, it was because the people inside were rather scared. The area had gone through quite a big change, uh, and during a short period of time, the population of the parish, certainly at the time of the census, uh, then had gone from being quite mixed to being largely a uh, population of 90% to 20 to 30 year olds, so students and young professionals. The area had completely changed, and maybe the church, in that sense, was the only place that had not. Keeping the doors closed or challenging anyone who went in was a way of um, staying safe, uh, was um, somewhat protective. Um, my final uh, story involves a door. Uh, I can't remember who told me this uh, sort of spiritual tale as such, and I can't remember where it comes from. So, um, and I can't remember the whole of the story either, which doesn't help. But it goes along something like this. Um, one day Jesus came back, or Jesus was around, and um, he went up to this family who lived in a nice new terraced house somewhere and said, um, do you mind if I come and stay here? Uh, I need somewhere to stay. He said, oh, yes, of course. We were very, ex very excited about it. Um, but it got a bit troublesome in the end because all these people kept coming around to see Jesus. They kept coming around to ask for his advice on things uh, or to ask for healing or something like that, Any, you know, all those kind of things. And their house got a bit busy. All these people kept turning up and so on. So eventually they sort of said, you know, Jesus, can you just restrict it to maybe a few hours a day or something like that. So that happened. But they still were getting a bit sort of um, anxious and whatever and worried. So they gave Jesus a room uh, and he was only allowed in there. But as things got further and further along um, and they were getting more and more uh, impatient with what Jesus was, uh, how Jesus was disrupting their lives, they locked him in. But just to make sure that everyone knew he was still there, they put a little candle outside the door burning so that they knew he was he was still in there, and occasionally on you know, nice days they put some flowers outside just to make it look pretty. Uh, but they had, in that sense, controlled Jesus. 
And there is a temptation generally, I think, isn't there, that of, uh, like to be in control. I certainly like to have um, a degree of control over what's going on around me. Um, but there's also a fear of change. Now, that church I went to was very much scared of change. But being a follower of Christ, being a Christian, is all about changing. Does not change is, well, is to, is to um, not succeed in what you uh, promise to do at your baptism when you, uh, and your confirmation of rejecting evil and turning to Christ. And so, the temptation of, um, of trying to be in too much control, of also shutting those doors, of not letting people in, but also shutting those doors on yourself so that you are only confining your Christian faith to certain times of the day or certain times of the week or certain parts of your life, certain people who you mix with, um, so as to also hide the fact that you have changed, that you have, um, in many ways, discovered something wonderful, but not willing actually to share it uh, and still maybe behave in such ways which are those ways which we all hear frequently of people when they church uh, accuse the church or Christians of hypocrisy, um, of um, doing one thing on a Sunday and doing another, doing another thing the rest of the week. However, even though we may try and lock our faith away or lock Jesus away, it was not those who went to the tomb on the first Easter day who rolled the stone away. The stone was already rolled away. Jesus was already out. Um, we cannot control that. We actually have to accept the invitation to embrace the change, to, um, to embrace knowing more about our faith, learning more about our faith, so we understand the change, we understand where that change is going, so that we do not have to be afraid. Those first Christians were afraid. The resurrection was something very life-changing, something completely... Um, incomprehensible. Of course it is. Someone coming back from the, rising from the dead. Of course it is. And they found that, of course, it is difficult. Their lives were changed. Many of the early Christians were martyred. But they knew it was for one good reason, that it was because Christ promised them eternal life by embracing that change, by flinging open the door, both personally and uh, other ways. We can all have that eternal uh, glorious life which is promised for us.
Blessed, praised, hallowed and adored, be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory. O sacred heart of Jesus, O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, Give us some bread from heaven, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who in a wonderful sacrament has left unto us memorial of thy passion, grant us, we beseech thee, to so venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruits of thy redemption, who livest and reignest, world without end. Blessed be, God. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. 
Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Blessed be the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her spouse most chaste. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God and his saints. Blessed be 